And here we are back at Who's Right, and we're at the Lincoln Day Dinner still, and tonight we have Sue Lynch with us, and Sue is uh, president of the uh, National Republican Women's Federated, and we are pleased to have you as a guest here tonight, Sue. Welcome. Thank and you very much. Yes, and you know, I am always fascinated by the fact that the National Republican Women Federated is the oldest Mm -hmm. organization, women's organization in the country. Mm -hmm. It was founded in the 1800s. Well, it was founded in the 1800s, but we were incorporated in 1938. Uh-huh. So. so it's been in um, effect for many, many years mm -hmm. and actually is the backbone of the Republican Party. There's just no way that candidates would be elected if it weren't for the National Republican Women. And tell me how you use the Women's Federated to get out the vote and um, elect Republican candidates. Well, um, we thank you very much for inviting me here this evening. Oh, you're welcome. Um, actually, NFRW has been uh, incorporated since 1938, and so we will be 73 years old come September. Uh -huh. But throughout that entire period of time, um, our our main thrust has always been grass, grassroots advocacy. And so that has continued on all of these years. However, um, back in the late 60s and 70s, you know, Republican women really were the ones who developed and um, worked with state parties, county parties, uh, on the campaign management schools. And so we had our team of people who would talk about all facets of campaigning, from, you know, the voter turnout to ID to scheduling, public relations, um, all of the above was incorporated into, into a campaign management school. And so that's really what we continue to do and focus on as a national organization is to educate and promote women in um, not only helping on campaigns but running for office. Well, right, and that's, you have annual meetings that do that for your presidents and uh, the main uh, women that run the organizations. Isn't that true? Well, um, our campaign management schools are independent of our board meetings, oh. except for in convention years. I see. And then we have a campaign management school that ties into our national convention. And this year, it's in Kansas City, mm -hmm. and we will have a campaign management school. I just came from Kansas, uh, two-day planning with our consultants and, you know, figuring out how we're going to get all these women in, you know, one large room. And okay. so, but at the same time, we will have a campaign management school that will be available to our women to attend during that period of time. So these campaign management schools are run on constantly then right. all over the country. Right. And any Republican woman can sign up for them at we, any time, is yeah, that the case? Yeah, women or men. Uh, oh. I've seen, you know, a number of men come into uh, our campaign management schools to become more um, aware of how you do op opposition research. They may not stay for the whole time, but segments of the campaign management school. We just had one in Virginia. Uh -huh. And it was, you know, attended very well. And, of course, you know, we're all looking to 2015 mm -hmm. um, or 2012. 15, I'm thinking of my convention of the site <laughs> selection that we're doing. You know, the dates just all run right. together. But yes. anyway, um, 2012. And so everyone is gearing up now because it takes fundraising, fundraising, fundraising right. to right. run. And our campaign management school has really... Um, compressed all of those uh, entities in, in what makes up a successful campaign. So if a person wanted to really get involved in the 212 election, mm -hmm. now's the time to go to one of the campaign management yes. schools yes. and prepare themselves sure, for sure, that. Sure, sure, sure. 
And how long are the schools? Well, we have a one and a two day school. I see. And it depends on, you know, just the, uh, how extensive we get into, the, like I say, the opposition research or um, fundraising, of course. You know, those two things really are um, what camp, what, what, are what candidates um, struggle with. Right. So, so you bring in speakers mm -hmm. from um, all over the nation, I suppose, to uh, teach yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. educate. Yeah. Well, in the campaign management school, we um, we do hire uh, and retain the professional consultants. Mm -hmm. um, Joe Gaylord, who that's a name that you know has been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. Now he's with Newt Gingrich, and oh. um, Joe has been one of our longtime uh, consultants in campaign management school. And he actually was with GoPack. And so, you know, although GoPack was after uh, NFRW had campaign management schools, a lot of the partnering continued. Joe and John Exnicious, and I mean the list kind of goes on and on of you know the that circle of consultants who help do campaign management schools throughout the United States. Right. So these are held simultaneously all across the country, so people can yeah. get access mm -hmm. to them. I yeah. Think. Yeah. Well, that's fabulous. It See, is. This is why you're so wonderful, and this is why you get candidates elected because yeah. you educate the women that are going to go out and get the vote out mm -hmm. for these candidates. So they, they know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They actually can, you know, be responsible enough to go out and get their, uh, their electorate out to vote. Mm -hmm. And this is in just incredible. And well, it, it, sure pr it sure proved itself, you know, in November when we elected nine new Republican women at, at, in the congressional uh, I I or in Congress and, you know, Kelly Ayotte um, uh, for the United States Senate and then four Republican women governors, you know, Just Jan amazing. Brewer's yes. reelection, right. you know, Susanna Martinez, uh, Congressman Fallon, and then of course Nikki Haley in South Carolina, and we targeted all of those races. We, meaning the NFRW, where uh -huh. we actively at, went to those areas and campaigned at the grassroots. Incredible to help yeah. elect them. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it was great. It is so amazing, though, to have a Wisconsin woman being uh -huh. president of the National Federated Republican Women. That is. Where very proud to have that be the case, of course. But getting right down to the roots of the actual cities and counties mm -hmm. where the actual groups meet, the Republican women meet, mm -hmm. how do you, as a president, if want to see those groups functioning? What is your goal for them as far as what you, you want to see them do and and enact in their groups? Well, as president of the National Federation of Republican Women, what I did when I came into the office is I created a theme, and that was Taking Back America. So that was a unifying uh, theme that we could all work towards. One of the initiatives that we all work towards from the club level to the district level, to the state level, is the voter ID project. That's our uh, uh, a legislative initiative that we work hand in hand from the east to the west coast. Because, as I mentioned in my speech tonight, you know, not everybody has photo ID um, that they have to show when they go to the polls. And you know, I'm sitting there thinking with all the fraud that we have seen in Wisconsin over the years, right. um, this issue is not unfamiliar here. However, in other states, um, you know, they, they, when you educate them of why to show a photo, uh, photo ID, mm -hmm. especially with all the illegal immigration coming in, I mean, you know, there are just a, 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 whole, a, a whole bunch of reasons why we really should show a photo when we go to vote. Oh, sure. And yeah. so that is one of the initiatives uh, last year and this year that we will continue to work on. And it's something that at the club level, at the state level, uh, district level, that we can all relate to and move forward 
as a unified group. We have um, 1,594 clubs uh, oh in 48 states, uh, and then, as I mentioned, two today, Puerto Rico, uh, and, and our numbers continue to grow because when you grow your membership, you can grow your message. Right. And so women in numbers uh, has been kind of another theme that we have capitalized on to want people to come to our organization to show results by electing Republican women, by getting on the ballot, you know, information on voter ID, and the list goes on and on. But that's how we unify our organization as a whole. I see. Giving them something to work towards. So at the club level, what you really want is to recruit recruit new members to come oh, sure. in, and that is the main thing, main goal. And what's the best way to go about doing that? Well, you know, um, I always felt that, you know, the best way to um, recruit membership is to ask people. Right. You'd be surprised how many people say um, to me, well, I've never been asked to be a part of your group. Yeah. But you know, there are like-minded groups around. I mean, um, when I look at my own community, the hospital auxiliaries, the Women Business Association, um, Lions Club, you know, those organizations have people who are philosophically in line with what we think. Women in business, I mean, that's a, that's a fast-growing segment of our society. You need to line yourself up with like-minded women in order to be successful. Because when you show success, they want to be a part of your group. Right. Well, you are a picture of success, and we are so proud to have you here tonight and so ha proud to have you as our speaker. And so we appreciate you being here. And thank you. And having Sue Lynch as a guest speaker here tonight on Who's Right has been a pleasure. And we thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank Good you morning. very much. Yes. All right. Good night.